So let's take a look at this link between these recent teen killers and video games. Violent video games increase aggressive behavior as much as lead exposure decreases children's IQ scores. Where is the artistic value of shooting innocent victims? They put guns in the hands of little kids and teach them how to kill. He was trained to kill with Call of Duty and other video games. Is it true that violent video games make people more violent? I'm a professor of economics at the University of Texas at Arlington and a casual gamer. I'm also a parent of children who enjoy video games and I was curious to find out if video games could cause them to harm others. So I did some research. I conducted three studies to investigate the link between real-world video game usage and actual crime or fighting. These studies used different methodologies and different data sources, and in all three cases, I found that more video game playing is actually associated with less real-life violence. That's right, less. A 100% increase in violent video game consumption led to a 1% statistically measurable decrease in violent crime. Okay, that's not a big decrease. But it undermines the claim that violent video games increase violence. So how could virtual violence decrease actual violence? One theory is catharsis, which is to say letting off steam. One might vent violent impulses through a video game rather than upon an actual person. Another theory has to do with time management. Even without a cathartic effect, every hour that people are sitting at home playing video games is an hour that they're not out on the streets getting into trouble. I'm not alone in my findings. Recently, other researchers have published findings that cast further doubt on the link between violent video games and actual violence. But all this means that, however well-intentioned the calls for restrictions on violent video games are, as a society, we would be censoring games based on a mistaken belief that they cause violence, and could actually be leaving Americans exposed to more real-life harm. And calls for such censorship continue, as in Congress's recently proposed Video Games Ratings Enforcement Act, and the 2011 Supreme Court case Brown v. Entertainment Merchants Association. And there's even more at stake if we were to allow this censorship. Video games have changed a lot in the past 30 years. What were once simple black and white blocks and nearly indiscernible images flickering on a television screen are now lifelike beings whose actions we experience on a visceral level. Some games now tell stories and evoke emotional responses similar to the finest literature, film, or theater. And video games are perhaps the fastest developing form of artistic expression ever devised. The artistry and techniques used by game creators continues to expand and evolve rapidly. Restrictive legislation would curb the freedom of artists and possibly stop valuable stories and content from ever being shared. Contrary to popular belief, youth violence has steadily declined over the past 20 years, exactly when video games have become popular. This is hardly consistent with the idea of games causing violence. When people are violent, it's not because games made them that way.